All right, guys, I get a lot of questions on uh, Sony's EI mode, even from some of my professional friends. For some reason, people overcomplicate it in their minds. And so I'm going to try my best to just dumb it down, keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to start off with how I use it and how some other people use it and why I don't like using it in that way. So simply why and how I use it. When you're shooting an S-Log3, as you may have heard, you want to overexpose by a stop or two. All right, guys, right now I'm filming on the Sony FX6 and on the back of the monitor, this is the perfect exposure that I would want for the final image. Now you'll see in post, if I want more latitude in my face or more details in my shirt, I'm going to have to lift the exposure. And when I do that, we're gonna get more noise because in S-Log3, it's better to overexpose as much as you can without clipping the highlights. So in order to do that, I'm going to boost my exposure in camera and then in post, I'll bring it back down. But let me show you the issue here. So you see in the back of the monitor right now, this image, it looks like our image is off. It's kind of uninspiring. It's kind of hard to uh, pay attention to. And you naturally just want to go and underexpose it in camera so it looks right. But again, we just saw the issue with that. And you can see how much more cleaner this final image is when we get into post-production because I could put a window on my face, I could lift the shadows back up, I could push it wherever I want it to go. So this is the whole point of Sony Cine EI. If you expose from the middle gray and you try to recover any of the shadows or blacks within that footage, you might clip them or you're gonna have more noise. So what's cool about S-Log3 is we have so much dynamic range and that log profile that you can overexpose before clipping your highlights and then in post you bring it back down. That's like even Hollywood secret to getting like night shots is they overexpose a lot of it. They light and pump in as much exposure as they can and then in post they bring it down and that gives you like that really cool matte look and you can still see into the blacks of the image. So this is why I use it. Say if my hair was clipping for some reason, I would go in and I could raise my exposure. So let's just go to F4. So you see on the monitor here, our exposure is way too bright. I know for me, this is hard for me to pay attention on what I'm filming at just because everything's so bright and I can't tell if my whites are clipping or not. Obviously they are. Just go with the example. So, but the whole point of doing this again is so in post, I'll show you guys in camera, I could bring the exposure back down and it's gonna give us a cleaner image. So we can all agree the exposure in post looks amazing. But how do we get this to look amazing too? You can simply go up to your ISO and we can lower this. And the cool thing is, you guys see, as I'm lowering this, the monitor looks amazing. The monitor's exposure looks amazing. But in camera and on in post-production, the exposure stayed the same. Why? Because we're in Cine EI mode. So basically what Cine EI mode is doing is if you're in the lower base ISO of uh, ISO 800, whatever exposure changes you make to the ISO, it's not doing anything in camera. It's just changing the preview on the monitor. So to put it plain and simple, how I use it, Basically, I like to set my exposure at the base ISO, which is what the camera's recording internally, which is 800. This is what the camera's seeing. So I like to set my exposure there. So I look at my histogram, I look at my zebras, I look at whatever exposure tools I'm using, and I'm making sure that I'm not peaking any highlights or any blacks. Obviously, depending on what your filming scenario is, obviously we're indoors and we have crazy exposure pumping through those windows, I'm having to blow them out. But I still want the blacks in the image to still be safe. And I don't want a bunch of noise in my image. So again, this is the exposure that was set in camera. But again, once that exposure set, I could go in and once again, I could lower my ISO just so I can see what the final image is gonna look like when I bring that footage back down and post. That's how I use it. Now, let me explain how other people might use it. When you change this ISO in Cine EI mode, again, the camera's still locked at 800, but you're shifting all the exposure tools. Now, this is my gripe, and Sony, you could you could fix this. If Sony gives the option to lock their internal exposure tools to the base ISO, so when we're changing the Sin EI ISO, it's not actually changing the exposure tools. If they did that, we could basically use this as some people use uh, exposure LUTs. You can make LUTs and you could bring them down a stop or two, that's basically how I'm using this. So again, let me explain how now other people use it. Say if you just wanna make sure that your blacks are not gonna get clipped and you're gonna have plenty of information in there. You could go in and you could set the ISO to 400. Again, it's in the EI mode. On here, the exposure looks too dark. So what I would go and do is I would raise my aperture or my ND. And you can see now we're getting an overexposed image. So in post, I could bring that down. But you guys are probably witnessing in post 
the exposure is way brighter than what we're seeing on our monitor. So you're basically cheating the exposure tools. You're using it as a tool to change where your dynamic range is being shifted. I hope this is making sense. Say this other way around and we're outdoors. So let's just use the peaking outside. Let's put this back to F4 and let's put our ISO back to 800. So again, you're looking at the base exposure and this exposure looks fine. But say if we want to make sure that we never blow out our highlights, we would go in and we could raise the ISO, let's just do 1600. So now all of our dynamic range is gonna get shift down below. Let me explain. So in order for me to get a good exposure here, I'm going to have to change my aperture. So let's go to, uh, let's just do F8. So F8 on the monitor, this looks good. And you're gonna most likely see that our highlights in the windows are probably being brought down a little bit more. So again, this is why I don't like using Cine EI in this mode because this is our actual exposure and it's too dark. We're gonna get a lot of noise in our shadows. So again, I'm gonna put this back to the aperture I had it at. And once again, you see on the monitor, it's too bright. So I'm gonna go in my Cine EI after I set the exposure and I'm gonna change it just so my brain can see what's gonna look like in post. So hopefully that explains Cine EI mode for you guys. Hopefully I didn't just make it even more <laughs> complicated. Hopefully uh, some of you guys understood what Cine AI mode is for. This is kind of equivalent to shooting in a uh, raw mode on a red Komodo because the ISO does not matter. You're basically, if when you change your ISO, you're shifting where the dynamic range is going to favor the highlights or the shadows. And you're not shifting, if it's actually favoring them, you're shifting it on how you're going to expose. So you're favoring if you want the highlights or the shadows instead of just keeping the dynamic range smack down in the middle, which I prefer to do. Again, personally, I like using it because if you're not in Cine EI mode, if I was to have this in ISO 400 right now, this is going to be the baked in exposure. And so it's just safer for me to set 800 ISO because we're getting max dynamic range in the shadows and the highlights, and I get to have the ultimate control over it. That's it. Peace.